two. Thanks for tuning in wherever you are across the USC Trojans Media Network. This is uh, always fun to get together in the spring, see where things were at, and then we have the long waits until the fall and kickoff, guys. But when we get there, it'll be year three under Lincoln Riley, and, uh, you know, a lot of excitement, a lot of expectations around it. Always, always excitement. Uh, this time of the year, you know, you got a lot of new faces, new numbers out here. We'll be get, learning a lot of guys today. So this time of year, always exciting. Obviously, a, a big time to be working out for these guys and then finishing up spring ball here. So an exciting time at USC as they get ready to kick off a new era in the, in the Big Ten Conference. Sue, are you excited for what's, what's to come this season? It's USC, of course. We always have big expectations, and, you know, we've seen some early success. We've seen some up and downs, but I think this year, going into this new conference, we got to make a splash, and we have to uh, let things be known uh, fairly quickly. So we play LSU week one, so there's going to be a lot of challenges this year. I'm excited to see what happens. Hold on. we got to get uh, we got to get Cody some sound there. We... Uh Hello, hello. Oh, there, there we go. Cody? All right, fire yeah. away. Sue said it best, though, but the biggest thing for me is making a splash in this new conference, right? we got to go out there and show that we belong. Uh, coming from the West Coast, we're going to play a lot of those teams in the Midwest, and it's going to be tough and have some tough conditions, but uh, I'm excited for this jump to the Big Ten. And, and the biggest thing for me that we're going to talk about throughout this show as well is the quarterback competition, right? The first time under Lincoln Riley that there's going to be someone else at quarterback besides Caleb Williams. Yeah, the big story of this offseason, though, a major shakeup on the defensive side of the ball, really uh, uh, a total change. Uh, changeover overhaul uh, of the coaching staff with the exception of, of Sean Nua uh, who, who, who comes back and, and stays in, in his position, Sean, but it starts with the new defensive coordinator in, in Dan Lynn coming over from UCLA. Yeah, big get for uh, for Coach for Coach Lincoln Riley uh, you come over from UCLA. He obviously had a, a great defensive scheme against uh, the Trojans last year and showed well against them. Maybe one of the reasons he was brought across town, but uh, did a great job in just one year uh, at UCLA, turning that thing around, getting him in the top 15, and it looks like a good hire, but also we, we add other uh, names up there as well you know you got coach Beck Belk excuse me Doug Bell coming over M Matt Entz at a linebacker coach and then coach Henderson at D-line and, and retaining coach Sean Nua so two defensive guys two defensive line guys up front a little uh, continuity there with coach Nua staying and then some new guys uh, around the program who you know bringing some great energy we've got a chance to talk to a couple of these guys seem like they're really jazzed about developing players and getting these guys in the right situations to play great defense so what stood out to you when you looked at the names and the sort of profile of the coaches that they hired well just seeing how those boys Boys across town played against us last year was an eye opener and kind of what we praise coach Riley for how he can confuse defenses with his personnel and the formations he uses coach Lynn does the same exact thing he gives you different looks but they all looks the same but the personnel is different and you'll get to see that as we break down the film but confusion and everybody playing as one unit is what I noticed the most and that's kind of what we've been missing you know, Cody, what, what stood out to us in some of our conversations on Trojans Live, and you can, if you're watching us on YouTube, you can go back and see us interview all these uh, these new coaches. Uh, but they're developers. You know, a, lo a lot of them. You know, that's really what they what they came back to in this era. Uh, you know, it's difficult to, to have have a kid for long enough to develop them, but these guys have that ability. Yeah, and that's the biggest thing in recruiting right now, right? If I'm a parent and my kid's getting ready to commit to a school, and, and I know the transfer portal can mix that up a little bit, but I want to know how you're going to develop my kid, not only as a leader off the field, but on the field, how you're going to get them get ready for that next level to be able to go play in the NFL. And we have coaches that can do that. I'm so excited. I mean, I was surprised when we got Coach Lynn. I thought that was a great hire. Then we had Entz, uh, who's a head coach at North Dakota State, and uh, FCS National Championship winning coach comes really over here. Yeah, very accomplished. Doug Bell. And then we have Coach Henderson, who coached Aaron Donald, has been at the NFL, knows what it takes to win and develop young players. So I'm so excited. And, and you know, fans talked a lot this offseason about how are we going to approach the defense. Hiring a championship caliber staff, Lincoln Riley did just that. Cody, uh, let's let's start on the offensive side of the ball. We take a look at the key returners on this team. Listen, there's a lot to replace. There's no doubt about it, including, of course, uh, Caleb Williams, the uh, the Heisman Trophy winner, who's a, a most likely going to be the first pick in the NFL draft coming up this Thursday. Uh, but you do return Miller Moss, uh, who, who started the the bowl game, and uh, some young receivers. Uh, you know, who, who we saw you know real positive flashes of last year. Yeah, I'm excited for Miller. I mean, he did a great job in that bowl game. I'm going to break down a couple of those clips here. You see some on the screen right now from the Holiday Bowl. But I'm so excited about the guys around him as well, right? We had Woody Marks coming over at running back. Then you have Quentin Joyner and Amarian Peterson coming back and competing for that running back spot. And in my opinion, with Zachariah Branch, uh, Deuce Robinson, Jacoby Lane, Makai Lemon, uh, Hudson, all these guys, we have one of the best young receiving cores in the entire country. I might be a little biased, but I think freshmen going into sophomore, those four guys being in the same class is unbelievable. So whoever is that quarterback and gets that starting job is going to have a lot of weapons around him. You know, with the change in, in defensive staff, Sua, you know, it's a it's a fresh start for some of the defensive players that come back too. You know, we've seen, 
you know, moments with guys like Eric Gentry. You know, we, we, we're excited about Mason Cobb, and he's produced throughout his college career, you know, coming from Oklahoma State. It'll be interesting to see how those guys, you know, Jameel Muhammad, we saw moments from last year, how those guys fit into this new, new staff. Yeah, well, coming from a guy who's played in probably every defensive scheme <laughs> you can think of, uh, you just got to be open-minded. And sometimes you're going to be uncomfortable and asked to do things you didn't necessarily practice or come to USC thinking that you would have to do. But it's all about buying in. And I think that Coach Lynn's going to get this defense to play as one. Again, I, I can't stress and emphasize that. Uh, enough last year we saw a lot of confusion but this year with the new scheme you just have to have an open mind open ears and do your job and we'll see it today Jordan, I, I think with the new staff too you get a lot of spots are open now hey you, you might have been the guy last year for this defense you might have been uh, some of a prominence in this defense and yeah we got some returning guys and bear alexander eric gentry mason cobb but you, you, these spots got to be open again they're opened up everyone's got to compete for these spots again and that's what i think you're seeing this spring you, you hear i've heard uh, from the coaches saying that you know we want these guys to compete for all their spots and that's when you get the high level competition you got those young guys challenging the older guys who's going to win these spots and that's this is the time of year when that kind of stuff's happening, so you can kind of solidify that as you go into fall and you go into the season. Well, this is uh, still technically a Pac-12 team. We're on Pac-12 network today, but uh, everyone knows the transition coming to the Big Ten uh, officially will, will change over in August. But it is a Big Ten schedule, a Big Ten slate, a big season ahead for USC. It's a daunting schedule when you pull up, but it's it's an exciting schedule. I mean, all I see on there, guys, is is opportunity. LSU in Vegas, Michigan in the big house, Wisconsin coming here, Penn State coming here, Nebraska coming here. You know, this it's it's exciting for us. Yeah, I mean, it, it looks daunting, right? You, you stare up at it and you say, hey, I mean, you think about last year and kind of how we had, you know, a lull in the season at the start, kind of whatever it was, and then we got into the end of it and it was, you know, a little bit, we were a little bit overmatching the yeah. end. Here, you got to start out fast and you got to get going. Yeah, I mean, we looked. I remember looking at the first half of last season, going, "Hey, we're going to be we're going to be six and zero." Uh, but uh, you know, you look at this schedule, and you know, every single game is going to be a battle. Looks like I created that schedule on NCAA <laughs> football. Is what it looks like. But hey, we're up for the challenge, and uh, I like it because if we were to go undefeated, it just demands respect. All right, guys, uh, as promised, uh, Cody Kessler is going to walk us through this quarterback battle and our offensive game plan. That's coming up next on the Trojan Tailgate Show, presented by Yeti. What if you could use retirement accounts to invest in crypto? With iTrust Capital, you can. iTrust Capital allows you to invest in your favorite crypto assets 24-7 with the tax benefits of an IRA. So instead of paying taxes on your crypto gains every year, you can defer taxes till you retire using an iTrust IRA. Or with an iTrust Roth IRA, you can withdraw tax-free at retirement because you're in this for the long haul. Start investing today at iTrustCapital.com. Rediscover your perfect combination at Pechanga Resort Casino, where you can be an impact player, a clutch hitter, or a wild card. No matter what your game is, the excitement and relaxation you're looking for is here. So get back to the fun and play your perfect combination at Pechanga Resort Casino. You can feel it. A force that moves everything around it. With intensity and power that comes from deep down inside. Full-time fans, your passion is unshakable. And you deserve a reward. Medela, the mark of a fighter.
E as pegar. You pink. Here we go. So far, great day at the Coliseum. This is the Trojan Tailgate Show presented by Yeti with Sean Cody, Sue Cravens, and Cody Kessler. I am Jordan Moore, and it's time now to get you set a look at our new offense post Caleb. It's our offensive game plan with Cody Kessler. Hot route! Red 7, Red 7, Red 7! I don't know what Red 7 means. The USC Trojans offensive game plan is brought to you by AMPM. Too much good stuff. One of the biggest topics this offseason is the quarterback competition and what this offense is going to look like post Caleb Williams. Now, I know it's between Miller Moss and Jada Maeva, but I want to take a look at a couple plays from the bowl game where Miller Moss is a quarterback and how Lincoln's play calling might change a little bit. So now if you take a look at your screen, the first play from the Holiday Bowl, this is a great job by Miller Moss. This is a quick play action fake, and he understands I'm going to beat you with timing, accuracy, and decision making. I'm going to get the ball out quick. He's reading that outside linebacker, and as he flies out, he knows he has Makai Lemon in the slot running a quick slant or a quick post. Get the ball out quick, but if you stop it real quick, look at that. Miller knows he's going to take a hit, right? He's not going to try to spin out of it. He's not going to shy away from it. He's doing a, do a great job absorbing that hit and delivering an accurate football. And as this play continues to go, this is a great job of taking that hit in the chin and look at that ball placement. That is beautiful. Just outside or just behind that outside linebacker in between three Louisville defenders. And this is a huge explosive play as it finishes up here on your screen for the Trojans early on in this game. And I love getting the young freshman involved early on, and this gives Miller Moss some confidence going forward. Now the next play I want you to pay attention to, and this is probably the most important series of the game. This is right after the series before Miller Moss threw an interception down there in the red zone. Louisville went back down and scored and brought this back to a one possession game. And I really wanted to see how Miller Moss was going to bounce back, handle adversity. If Lincoln was going to trust him, allow him to throw the football, and they did just that. You're going to get a cover four coverage here, but I want you to focus on the match coverage in the slot there. Jacoby Lane running an inside fade to that back pylon against that one high safety. Again, Miller knows I'm going to beat you with decision making, timing, and accuracy. I'm going to get the ball out quick. I'm going to help my offense to line and I'm going to throw an accurate football. He doesn't throw it out of the back of the end zone. He doesn't put it back on the pylon to where it's him or nobody or, or, or Jacoby or nobody. He throws a 50-50 ball, understands personnel, allows his big, tall, six-foot-four frame Jacoby Lane to go up and get it at the receiver position as this finishes up. A beautiful bounce back from Miller Moss. Way to handle adversity and come back and Lincoln trusting him to throw the football. Now this last play is probably my favorite from the entire game and probably the most important and the difference you'll see in play style between Miller or Jaden and Caleb Williams. You're going to notice that Louisville is going to be an all-out cover zero blitz. Miller's going to notice that nickel defender's coming off the edge. The safety's going to rotate down and be man-to-man -man on Taj Washington. But as this play goes, Miller's going to understand, we have six guys to only block seven. That defender that was just circled is the free rusher. I understand that because of protection. I know what I have to do. Caleb Williams being Houdini, a magician. We're so used to him making that guy look silly, making him fall over, spinning out of it, picking it up with his feet, or do work in the scramble drill and finding someone open. But Miller understands that's not quite my play style, right? I can make a guy miss if I need to, but I'm going to back away understand protection, know I can buy time by backpedal, get off balance, and you see Taj Washington running that over route, getting in front of that safety's face, and as it finishes up, this is a great job of Miller Moss, a perfectly thrown football, allowing Taj to get in between the safety and the football, shielding off that defender. A couple plays later, uh, Miller hits Deuce Robinson for a touchdown to really put this game away. Now, guys, again, I understand it's between Miller Moss and Jaden Maeva. We don't know yet who's going to be at the quarterback spot. I love the competition that Sean talked about, but these are some clips and what to expect maybe from Lincoln Riley's play calling post Caleb Williams. Yeah, and that's what interests me, guys, because it's been a while for Lincoln Riley. When I look at, at Lincoln Riley, the head coach, it all started with Baker Mayfield, and that's the closest thing for a comp that I think we have to Miller Moss since then because you go then to Kyler Murray, you go then to Jalen Hurts, you go then ultimately to Caleb Williams. These are really special athletes that love to hold the ball, that love to make plays with their feet. You know, Miller's a good athlete, Baker's a good athlete, but – you see the difference in the offense, timing, precision, accuracy, getting the ball out quickly. That's, I think, a little bit more what we can expect. I think it's somewhere where the offense struggled last year. You know, obviously you have a homer and hitter in, in Caleb Williams, and you want to give him as many opportunities to have his uh, hands on his ball, the balls and, and make the plays. But it was it was just it's, he struggled really, I think, in times to, to make the quick decision. And that's where I think Lincoln Riley's offense is really clicking. You saw the bowl game, and as Cody explained so well, that you, that's where it's got it's got to run on that timing. It's got to do those kind of things. If you don't have that kind of athletic quarterback, I think it's going to go back to that. 
So if it comes down to mobility and they feel like they need more of it, it does seem like Mayava has a little bit more of it just from what we've seen from his time at UNLV. Yeah, Jaden kind of fits the build or the mold that we've become accustomed to seeing when it comes to a Lincoln Riley offense. It's a, it's a quarterback that can beat you with an RPO. He can throw the, uh, throw the ball down the field and necessarily not scramble for a first down, but he can get a first down with his legs if he has to. You know, he can extend plays with his legs, but to throw it, not necessarily to run it. And that kind of is something that plays into this offense. But it's going to be a great competition. As, as Cody said, you know, Miller is the type of quarterback that because there isn't as much athleticism regarding being mobile, he has to be perfect in the pocket. He has to make quick decisions. He has to dissect defenses mentally before he delivers the football. So I'm excited to see what fits this play style better. I kind of like Miller with the lead right now. It's a good competition, though. You can see it because Miller's the older player, obviously much more experienced in the system. But Mayava is the more experienced player when you look at snap count. And, you know, he's thrown for over 3,000 yards in a season. So he's done it, albeit uh, he did it at UNLV you know we'll see if they maybe add more in terms of terms of the playmakers around them as it stands now it seems to me Cody the key to this team offensively as much as the quarterback is the growth we had a really talented freshman class of receivers but they were experienced guys last year so they didn't always get a chance to shine they're going to get their chance this season yeah you lose your top two playmakers on the outside with Brennan Rice and Taj Washington it, it's ready for someone to step up, right? And we saw flashes of it. We saw Deuce Robinson have some big plays. Uh, we saw Zachariah Branch, who I'd like to see a little bit more involved in the pass game, right? We know what he can do on special teams. We know what he can do on those unique gadget-type plays, the end of rounds. But the guy that I'm really excited for, too, and I guess two guys, too, that we haven't seen a lot of, Jacoby Lane and yeah. Makai Lemon. And, and I think the sky's the limit for Jacoby Lane. We just did the podcast with me and Keely a couple days ago, and apparently Coach Wiley said that Jacoby Lane has put on 30 pounds of muscle on that 6'4 frame in the last three to four months. So what? he's going to be a beast. On, what? That's How? what they were – yeah. <laughs> Test him. I know. How? I know. I was thinking the same thing. But either he's way – big, though. Like, I mean, just but he the, the has frame that frame to do it. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. If I put on 30 pounds like I did when I was in college – It was, was a bad 30. It was for the wrong – yeah, it was a bad 30. It was a bad 30. But but either way, Jordan, it's, it's – it, it was a really stage is. coach 30. Yeah, yeah, it was a stage coach 30. Yeah. But it really, it really was, honestly. But <laughs> in incredible catch radius, though. We got a chance yep. to see that in the Holiday Bowl. I agree. I think he could really be special. Yep. Speaking of special, USC women's basketball had an incredibly special season going all the way to the Elite Eight. Juju Watkins uh, solidifying herself as the face and future of the sport, really. Uh, just such an incredible freshman season, season, your national freshman of the year. We might get a chance to see her or the women's basketball team later on. Uh, they're going to be honored during this game. But get your season tickets. Go to usctrojans.com slash WBB deposits to secure those today. Uh, when we come back, we'll switch to the defensive side of the ball. This is the Trojan Tailgate Show presented by Yeti. USC Trojan fans, smart stop sell sports is ready for you. May the right company turn any lake into a great lake. May true friendship be found in hard to reach places. May the toughest part of your day be deciding which arm to carry the cooler with. May you ditch malt-based hard seltzers for one with real vodka and real juice. And may high noon not just be a time of day, but the perfect way to enjoy it. High noon, sun's up. Hi, I'm so sorry. I'm trying, honey. Going as fast as I can. Are we going to be late? Oh, hold on, the gift. I'm so late. Get over it, I'm sorry. We're always late. Always. What do you think of my cookie? Is that my sweater? Uh... This holiday season, how we get there matters. But being there matters more. Your family might wait, but the season of Audi offers won't. Get these exceptional offers now. Freshly paid. Perfect combo. Quality and convenience. Now go ahead. Tungus know what you want to do. So, that good one. <laughs> when breakfast tastes picture perfect, 
That's Cravenience. Lick and pile. AM, PM. Too much good stuff. Dungus! I'm getting you set for the USC football spring game presented by Postmates. This is the Trojan Tailgate Show presented by Yeti with Sean Cody, Sue Cravens, Cody Kessler. I am Jordan Moore, and it is time now for our defensive game plan. Everyone knows defense wins championships. And a Trojan's victory will require a solid defensive game plan. Defense on three. One, two, three. Defense! This is the USC Trojans defensive game plan brought to you by Life Law, injury law made simple. All right, everybody. We've been, uh, as a team, we've been on Tinder swiping right on a few coaches. <laughs> and uh, we found a few good ones, got a few matches, baby. But uh, the most important one we got was Coach Lynn from across the way. We brought him over from the bad guys. He's a good guy now. And we're going to praise him uh, in these few clips that we saw against our boys last year. So I'm going to drop my pride and we're going <sighs> to break down the film against uh, this USC offense last year. But Coach Lynn, he's known for confusing teams, learning, or lining up in multiple personnel, getting all different types of players on the field. And it's, 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 a, it's a hard picture for quarterbacks to look at. So let's bring up this first clip uh, uh, of what we're going to see in the future. We have Coach Lynn lining up in a nickel formation, and everybody just plays left to right. This is what I love about this defense. Nobody is trying to be Superman. Nobody is trying to do anything that they don't need to do. The safety is going to play his responsibility. The D-line is going to play to their leverage. And the nickels are going to play in space. Right here, you see a nickel shoot his gun from the hash. He read low hat from the tackle. He did not wait and chatter his feet because Coach Lynn teaches you to be instinctual. He shoots his gun and makes a tackle for loss all by himself. There doesn't need to be a, a team effort right here. Everybody does their job, and we trust that our teammates are going to make the tackles. The next play. We're in the red zone. We have five defensive ends in the game. We don't have any big boys in the game. We need to be athletic. We line up and play to our leverage. We put all DB's heels on the goal line. We don't line up five yards in the end zone and have no situational awareness like we saw so many times last year. They line up on the goal line, put four DNs who can get after the ball or get after the quarterback, and we sack Caleb before he can even Consider there's an option. Again, we didn't do anything special. This is just Coach Lynn's way of confusing an offensive line, get the slide protection to go the opposite way, and we get a one-on-one -on -one and a mismatch. And the third play that I like the most, trust your teammates. We have guys out here that will do their job. You don't need to worry about anything else. And this clip right here, we have Taj Washington getting ready to convert a first down, and the corner right here can easily peak get off of his leverage, not use his hands, try to be Superman and completely give up a first down on third down. Instead, we have the safety come down and make a play and make a tackle short of the first down and to get a crucial stop, trust. And I pray that this defensive coaching staff is going to keep all of these players accountable and we should have a lot more success on the defensive side of the field, at least in the secondary, from what I can see. Fantastic job by Sue Cravens breaking down that film there. I thought, you know, I think that one thing when I watched those clips and I watched the coach Lynn last year, what really stood out is his belief in his players, right? He, you know, you, you find guys on this defense, and that's what he's going to have to do this year is find those guys. He knew last year Latu Latu and, and Kamari Ramsey were his guys, right, and really pushed those guys, put them in play, make position. You saw uh, Latu Latu make that, that sack down there. At the, hey, this is my guy. I need you to make a play. I'm going to put you in positions. Kamari Ramsey all the year last year made them play, drags him from, from across town and brings him with us. I think that's what he does a good job of, finding who his guys are. He's going to have to find those guys. Who are my guys that I, I believe in in these playmaking positions to make those plays? How much do you think it'll help that he was able to get Kamari Ramsey and John Humphrey, uh, you know, guys that already sort of know his language, know his defense, yeah. to communicate to teammates? That's huge because you got two guys that can put forth an example of what Coach Lynn is looking for. You know, it's not guessing. You know, you, you need a guy who's going to be able to run in this playbook and be a leader on the field because – in case everybody knows, the two-minute drill might be a, a, a real thing for us this year, and, and things start moving fast, especially when you're on defense trying to get a stop to win the game in those last two minutes, and you can't go to the sideline to get communication from your coach. You need a rock on the field, whether it's your mic, a safety, or D-line, somebody on the field that when everything hits the fan, we can turn to him, and he's going to get everybody right. You have that in Kamari Ramsey. You have that in Humphreys on the corner, and both of these guys are actually 6'1", 6'2", bodies, so now we have size in the secondary that we did not have. 
Humphrey won't play today. Uh, he's dealing with an, with a minor injury, but Kamari Ramsey, check him out. He, he's number seven. Uh, two two other big pickups sort of came as a package deal, Cody, and, and that was uh, the brothers from from Oregon State, the the Arnold brothers, Akili Arnold, Easton Mascarenas, Arnold, really productive veteran players from a, a, a solid Oregon State defense. Yeah, exactly. Akili Arnold, Arnold has over 150 tackles in his career. A senior, a veteran player, a leader back there in the back or in the the back end of safety. And Sue just talked about it at, at safety position. We lose. Kalen Bullock, right? We have guys that are trying to step up. Anthony Beaver Jr., some other guys are trying to rotate. Bryson Shaw's back, but that is an open competition, and, and I love what Sue has said about Kamari Ramsey as well, coming over with Lynn. It reminds me a little bit of Caleb and Lincoln when they first came over from Oklahoma, but the one player that I'm really excited about on your screen right there is Easton Mascarenas Arnold. We broke him down. I got to do his film a little bit on one of our podcast episodes. He's such an unbelievable player at linebacker. He was second in the Pac-12 last year in tackles. First team all Pac-12 all over a field. He's a dog on the field. I love the way that he can cover out of the backfield. He can tackle out of the backfield over 100 tackles last year, and that's something that this defense lacked a little bit was surefire fire tacklers, and also he can cover really well in space, which you love to see. But, yeah, two great pickups for USC. A lot of great pickups, really, on the defensive side of the ball. All right, speaking of pickups, USC men's basketball has made a big pickup at head coach Eric Musselman. His era has officially begun over at the Galen Center. Get on the must bus. Lock in your season tickets, usctrojans.com slash MBB deposits. Eric Musselman will be in the house today as well. Next up, we're going to discuss our impact matchup and look at the line of scrimmage. This is the Trojan Tailgate Show presented by Yeti. Personal injury suits can be scary and full of questions. How can I pay for it? If I've been in an accident, who fixes my car? Who pays my medical bills? And will it all be worth it in the end? Life Law simplifies the process. Answering your questions and more by providing 24-7 support that's clear and precise. While offering the latest in technology to let you know where your case stands at all times. Good news. Life Law. Injury Law. You've earned this. So hold it up high. You clock in for happy hours and holidays, late nights, and regulars. When others go to play, you go to work. Because you don't just carry kegs, you carry the night. You are a fighter, and this is your reward. Medela, the mark of a fighter. Rediscover your perfect combination at Pechanga Resort Casino, where you can be an impact player, a clutch hitter, or a wild card. No matter what your game is, the excitement and relaxation you're looking for is here. So get back to the fun and play your perfect combination at Pechanga Resort Casino. Stop Self Storage has state-of-the-art security systems operating 24 hours a day. So we see everything, everything. Show presented by Yeti with Sean Cody, Sue Cravens, and Cody Kessler. I am Jordan Moore, and it's time now to take a look at our Impact Matchup. The Impact Matchup of the Week. Brought to you by Invesco QQQ. Explore with Invesco QQQ. Fight on. Let's go. And now, now, now the now. In 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 Impact Matchup of the Week. Well, our impact matchup, guys, is a look at the line of scrimmage. And listen, 
We know that this program has needed to get better at the line of scrimmage on both sides to get better in the Pac-12. Now that they're going to the Big Ten, it is clearly you know, imp imperative that this program continues to get bigger and better on both sides of the line of scrimmage. Sean, as you look at it, where is USC most prepared right now? Do you feel more comfortable with where they're at offensive line or defensive line? I think right now at this moment, I would it pains me a little bit, but I'm going to say offensive line. I think you know uh, when you see the guys who have who've got a chance to play so far, you look down the line, you, you think of uh, Jonah Monheim, probably the best player out of the group of players. He moves down to center. You've had a, a Lonnie Noah last year and, and, and Elijah Page getting a start in the bowl and Pregnant gets a chance to play out there. So got a lot of guys got reps last year and then the defensive line. I think it's there's going to be a lot of shifts. I think there's going to be a lot of a movement with Coach Henderson coming in and Coach Nua with those guys. I think there's going to be a lot of spots that are open for for, for trying to find out who's going to who's gonna win those spots. So you, you think about Bear Alexander, you think about Jameel Shelby and uh, Braylon Shelby, uh, Nate Clifton coming in. So I think there's some guys there. They haven't really found their pieces yet, but I, I think right now I'd say the offensive line is a little more developed probably the defensive line. I mean, agreed. You know, we also have had departures on the defensive line, and then we also don't have guys playing. So um, I would love to see where we are on the offensive line, the defensive line today in a live scrimmage, but I don't think we'll get to see that. So I have to agree with with Sean. You know, the O-line is probably a couple steps ahead right now. Offensive line, you know, big move, Cody, is, is taking Jonah Monheim, who we've seen at all different positions, but we, I don't think we've ever seen him play center before. Uh, but, you know, I'd always heard his future at the next level was in the interior of the offensive line, and you know, it does give them that veteran presence at center. Oh, I think we lost Cody there for a second. Can we hear him now? No, oh, all right. We have lost uh, Cody there for a second, but we did talk, uh, you know, a little bit about this uh, earlier this spring, Sean. But you know, Jonah Monheim, you know, he gives you that that veteran presence at center. Yeah, you know, it's a big move going down from from. He, he's played all the positions now, so you're pretty qu quite comfortable. Probably your best offensive lineman. He's been out left tackle, been inside a little bit. Now gets to move to the prominent position of center, who's a who's the quarterback of that offensive guy. And I think that's where Lincoln feels like he's most comfortable. Probably the most comfortable moving to the next level at that position. But uh, a big body, smart player. He's going to be the glue guy inside to get everybody in the right position. You know, a big thing that that it's clear that the program has emphasized Sua is is the weight room, and and I don't know if, how much they've what they've changed and how they've done it. You know, in terms of specifics, but you can see that they are promoting gains right now, and it is simply about taking the bodies they have and making those bodies bigger, not just hey going in the portal and finding bigger people, you know, to try to sort of put a bandaid on it. You know, we're seeing the same people just look bigger out here. Yeah, I used to assume the college 15 was for everybody, <laughs> but you know, I guess it's been kind of hard for us to give guys a, a, a some weight on their body. I know uh, Gentry's had a little trouble trying to get weight over the years. Yeah. But he, he's looking a little bigger. A lot of the guys at uh, Jacoby Lane, 30 pounds. Of muscle like he sounds like he's clay matthews from what i hear so <laughs> it's just it's hard to do and, and you know these are young kids and they're coming into their man's body so you know obviously it takes some time and maturation for that to happen but kudos to the training staff for getting these guys ready but we're gonna see how ready we are when we get into the big 10 because nebraska and wisconsin and penn state and, and iowa and all these are big uglies and these are teams that are going to run the ball 30 plus times and don't mind winning a game 10 to 7 so you need big ugly nasties like my boy right here hey, and uh <laughs> you can win those games all right uh our favorite segment as always it's time to get to our best in the game picks this is uh, who we have our eye on coming up for this spring game let's see the old dominion best in the game the best in the game the is brought to you by old dominion freight line official freight carrier of usc athletics helping the world keep promises <laughs> All right, we will start with uh, Keeley York. Keeley's going to join us here in a little bit. She'll be part of our second hour uh, as we transition into Trojans Live, but she will also have a live interview with Lincoln Riley coming up, so stay tuned for that. Uh, but let's get Keeley's best in the game pick up, and uh, she's going with the quarterback, Miller Moss, and certainly, guys, all eyes on uh, Miller today as he is uh, the presumptive favorite uh, at the starting quarterback spot. I don't think we have Cody. Cody, you're not with us? All right, Cody's silent right now. He's going to have to be a Penn and Teller situation. Good. Good. Uh, Cody's best in – this is the way Sua likes Cody. So this, this is <laughs> yeah. good for yeah. him. Yeah, Sua, there he is. Oh, Cody, you're there. We oh, you hear me now? Oh, oh, I can hear myself oh. the whole time. As long as you're talking crap to Sua, then right. it's, it comes through nicely. Yeah, there so, we go. I was about all right, to, yeah. so who's your pick? I went with Jacoby Lane, uh, someone that we, we saw in the, the Holiday Bowl. We saw that great catch in the back of the end zone there from Miller Moss. I'm excited about him. I think the sky's the limit just for the size, the strength, the 30 pounds that he's put on. I think he's going to have a big game today and have a great showcase in the spring game. 
Sua? <sighs> I, I, I chose him week one, I think, last year, and I got a dub off of it. But uh, well, there's no dubs today. Yeah, Just no for dubs. the record, there's no scoring system. There's no dubs today. No, no. Let's, we put that out there. But uh, Zach, Zach Branch, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I want to see him just like how Cody said. I want to see him in an expanded role. I don't want to see him in an age back position. I don't want to see him running and doing loop de loop and twirls in the background or in the backfield. I want to see him get down the field and, and, and get open on some real route tree type of plays and see if he actually can play a slot receiver role because that'll be huge for this young group of receivers. Sean? Yeah, Jordan, I think we lost a good back in Marshawn Lloyd last year. I thought he was really talented. Got to see a lot of uh, spurts of him. But uh, I think we pick up a big one this year. And then Joe Quavius, Woody Marks. He goes by Woody from uh, Toy Story. Quay, loves, Quay. Uh, loves the uh, loves the, loves the story. And so we go, we're going to call him Woody, I guess. So uh, Woody Marks in the backfield today. I get a chance to check him out. I think he has some talent. Looks looks the part. You see him physically uh, impressive in, in person and uh, definitely can uh, tote the pill. Woody Barks is the active leader in all of Division One in catches by a running back, so for career catches. So he is an impressive back, particularly as a receiver out of the backfield. I'm going to go with Jaden Mayava. He is the other uh, uh, main candidate in the quarterback competition, transfer in from UNLV. You know, just excitement in terms of we've never really seen him. So, you know, our chance to see him out here, um, see how much of a quarterback competition this really is. Uh, Mayava will have a chance to uh, stake his claim in front of the Trojan family here today. Speaking of in front of the Trojan family. The Coliseum will play host to the uh, Pac-12 tournament coming up. Uh, Lacrosse's senior day is tomorrow uh, at noon. The first uh, 500 fans get a free shirt, so get here for that. And then USC Women's Lacrosse will be the host for the Pac-12 championships as well. So a big time for lacrosse this spring. All right, we have more uh, Trojan Tailgate show to come here. We're getting close to kickoff. It's presented by Yeti on the USC Trojans Media Network. Wow, we're crunching tons of polygons here. What's going on? Where's Regina? Hi, I'm LaDonna. I invest in Invesco QQQ, a fund that gives me access to NASDAQ 100 innovations like real-time CGI. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it's, oh, don't worry, I got it. Become an agent of innovation with Invesco QQQ. Before investing, carefully read and consider fund investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses, and more in prospectus at Invesco.com. Caleb Williams, quarterback, USA. What I like most about athletic is that I can worry about my body and still go out and socialize, have fun with friends, um, and you know, feel fresh and focused still. Today, a strong NIL program is essential to long-term success. Introducing House of Victory, a nonprofit, alumni-led, name, image, and likeness collective. As a proud NIL sponsor of the USC Trojans, we're dedicated to providing student athletes NIL opportunities and resources. Supporters can honor the tradition of victory by ensuring success in our future. Victory is in the fabric of everything USC. Welcome into the House of Victory. Faster isn't always better. Like when you're getting a tattoo. Or saying I love you on the first date. Or putting together certain Swedish furniture. But when it comes to getting in and out of the airport, faster is always better. And at Ontario International Airport, you can have the stress-free experience from the curb to the gate. It's the least we can do. Rediscover your perfect combination at Pachanga Resort Casino, where you can be an impact player, a clutch hitter, or a wild card. No matter what your game is, the excitement 
and relaxation you're looking for is here. So get back to the fun and play your perfect combination at Pechanga Resort Casino. the Los Angeles Memorial Coliseum in downtown Los Angeles. The fire is burning up above the uh, inside the Olympic torch. This is an Olympic year, an Olympic summer, a fun summer ahead uh, coming up in Paris. And so we'll see a lot of USC Olympians out there. We're going to see uh, some USC football here today, the spring game. This is the Trojan Tailgate Show presented by Yeti with Sean, Sue, and Cody. I am Jordan, and it's uh, time now for our Cardinal and Gold Report. It's time for the Cardinal and Gold Report. Cardinal and Gold! Presented by Pachanga Resort Casino, proud partner of USC football. All right, guys, our Cardinal Gold Report. Uh, we talked about this a little bit, but it's the transition into the Big Ten. That is the story of the year for USC across all sports, uh, but in particular, uh, football. Uh, switches leagues. We're going along with 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 some old friends, uh, UCLA, Washington, and Oregon, old enemies, I guess. Uh, we will see Washington and UCLA on our schedule. We will not see Oregon unless we see them in the Big Ten championship game. But uh, we took a look at it earlier, guys, and it, it's a loaded slate. Um, but at the same time, I don't think we know what to expect. You know, how, how loaded is it when Nebraska comes in here? Sometimes I watch Nebraska and I'm like, that's – not, they're not very good, but, you know, at the same time, if, if, if there's certain areas where they'll test us that maybe Pac-12 teams weren't. Yeah, you never know. You, know, you, know, you don't know what these teams are going to be from year to year. Uh, you can kind of have an idea. You think Michigan's going to be great again. You think, you know, these teams will, will, right. will, will rise to the top again, but uh, you, you don't know, it. especially the first game of the year, right? You, I think I, you look at the LSU game, and those are tough games, the first game of the year, because you don't really have a preseason in college football, and this is kind of your preseason. I, I, I've heard Coach Lincoln Riley talk about it a bunch. you you got to go in there, and you got to figure things out in the first game. You're kind of on the fly. I remember first games in college, like, holy crap, this is a whole new thing, a whole new team. Who's our guys? And so you got to figure things out on the fly. I think the big thing about the, if I look at this schedule is is where the buys are at. I really like where the buys are at yeah. in, this, in this. You get a buy right right before Michigan. So after the first two weeks, you get a buy right before going to Michigan. And then at the end of the year, you finish off with UCLA and Notre Dame after a buy. So I think those buys really line up well with the Trojans. Hopefully they can get some some key things figured out and rested uh, during those weeks. When, when I look at uh, Michigan and Washington, you go, okay, those are the two teams that played the national championship game last year. They're both on the schedule as road games. But there's so much turnover in college football. Harbaugh's not at Michigan anymore. Penix and Kalen DeBoer aren't at Washington, so who knows? Yeah, I mean, I think Michigan will still be a tough match. Yeah. You're going to the big the house. Big house. Yeah. It's your first conference game in the Big Ten. You know, you're still USC, Key and USC and Michigan, rested, uh, they go, uh, you know, rivalries when, when in, in the Rose Bowl. Uh, so, you know, Michigan this, this, and Washington, this, you go, okay, those this are the two feel, teams that play the national this championship This need to feel like you have year. to beat USC is, is going to take place. So going against Michigan, even though Harbaugh's not there and McCarthy's not and all that, it's still going to be a tough matchup. I'm most excited to see this LSU game week one because how you win or lose that game can say a lot. A loss isn't, you know, a uh, nail in the coffin. USC, Unless it's a blowout Michigan, like we got to see go, against uh, Alabama. No, but even that team in 2016 won a Rose Bowl. So uh, this, this, this go, schedule okay, is a lot, field, but again, we're USC. So we don't want anything less. We're not ducking any smoke like the Lakers. Yeah, and uh, real quick, we got we got to get to break. But the biggest change this year, too, nationally, is that the college football playoff expands. And now it feels like almost like pro sports. Playoffs are bust for any good team. I think cut, yeah, Cody's cutting out on us, so we're we're dealing with some technical Did you guys difficulties. Pay Cody? Do I pay Cody? <laughs> Do we pay him this week? Are we paying Cody for we've this? We've got some spring issues <laughs> we're dealing with a little bit here, but again, the schedule is loaded. Get to usctrojans.com/tickets and get your football tickets for this upcoming season. Uh, when we come back, we will have Keely Yor and the head coach Lincoln Riley coming up live from the Coliseum, getting close to the uh, spring game on the Trojan Tailgate Show, presented by Yeti. The right way to top a sub is with real red wine vinegar made from red grapes and no food coloring. And the right way to film it is in slow motion, obviously. Because authentic ingredients make a sub above. Being the best takes hard work. It takes early mornings, planning, 
precision, sweat, sacrifice, and teamwork. That's why Old Dominion Freight Line, the number one national LTL carrier for quality, works hard to be the best in the game and is proud to support those striving to be the best in their game. Old Dominion Freight Line, helping the world keep promises. SeatGeek is the ticketing app for fans like the High Five Strangers guy. Game-winning interception, first down, just a nice, solid tackle. If you're in arm's length, you will be swapping skin with this extrovert. You see, he knows SeatGeek got him a great deal on tickets, so we can focus on what he does best, smacking palms. SeatGeek handles the tickets to sports, concerts, and more, so fans can fan. Trojan Tailgate Show presented by Yeti with Sean Cody, Sue Craven, sometimes Cody Kessler. I am Jordan Moore. <laughs> Cody, uh, uh, is there anything you want to say, man? I mean, I feel like it sounds like your mic's working now. I just want you to get anything off your chest. To, you haven't been able to talk here for a little while. Can you hear me? Am I, am yeah. I back? Okay, I good. Like no, I've had some, loud and clear I had some stuff I want to talk about, the offensive line, about the schedule breakdown, college football playoff. I just want to know who Sue paid off to get my mic turned off through the show. <laughs> I have connections. <laughs> Well, uh, for those of us uh, inside the bowl, a welcome uh, to the Trojan Tailgate Show presented by Yeti. They should throw a, a QR code up there here soon. We're going to transition after the Trojan Tailgate Show to Trojans Live, which will be a live show uh, throughout the, the spring game where we'll, we'll have the opportunity to do some interviews, talk to some people, and then uh, in-depth breakdown of this season ahead for sure. But in a moment, we're going to have Keely Yor with the head coach, Lincoln Riley. So we are, are standing by for that uh, uh, you know, we were talking a little bit going into break, and, and so, Cody, you can chime in on this uh, while we wait, but but the biggest change in, in the sport now uh, with the expanded playoff and, and just how that changes your perception of what success is going into a season now. Yeah, absolutely, and that's what I was going to say before break. Sue had talked about is you can afford to lose one or two games now and your playoff hopes aren't done, right? They expanded 12 teams now, but it's going to be tough. The Big Ten is going to be a tough conference. This is the first year. There's no more East and West, right? It's just the top two teams are going to play for that Big Ten championship, so it's going to be – a tough road ahead but if you're not one of those top two teams and I say maybe top four top five in the Big Ten depending on how difficult the conference is you still have a chance to get into the college football playoff all right let's get to the head coach Lincoln Riley right now with Keely or on the field thanks Jordan coach after 14 practices what have you learned about this team it's been excited to see them come together you know the defensive staff coming in a new defensive system I think our guys have taken to it really well um, and really have enjoyed just the, the culture and the vibe of this team. They really get along well. They compete well with one another and excited to put that on display today. One final practice in the Coliseum. What do you hope to accomplish today? We only get so many of these days. And for a lot of these guys that haven't played in the Coliseum, that haven't played college football yet, this is such a valuable day. So great day for football. Let's all enjoy it. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. Jordan, back to you. Thank you, Keely. Thank you, Coach. Uh, enjoy the game out there today. For Again, for all of you uh, listening inside the bowl, scan that QR code. We can be your second screen experience or your first screen and while you're watching the game live. Uh, and, and join us as, as we will have the next hour uh, coming up here inside uh, the bowl with the little Trojans Live show as well. But uh, as we get into it, guys, the spring game, little offense, defense uh, seems to be the situation again this season. Yeah, you get to play in the Coliseum. The coach just said it, man. Look at all these guys. You guys are excited about this one, right? Let's get, we get to watch the Trojans play in spring ball. I mean, right, we, football's so far away, and we're watching football. This is great, man. This is good. We get to see Coach Lynn come out here with his defensive staff. We get to see the offensive, line, offensive changes, new quarterbacks, but a lot of things going on today. So it should be a lot of entertainment today. I'm looking forward to it. 
Are we live? Are we going like live tackling today? Is it real to the ground? Oh, I think so. Or is it? Oh yeah. So, yeah. Oh yeah. I'm excited. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome yeah. to the United Airlines Field oh. at the Los Angeles like Memorial Coliseum soul, for today's but, uh, 2024 USC oh, football <laughs> spring game. <laughs> we hope you enjoy the entire game day experience today, yeah, and we just, remind uh, you just to please PA, follow so. the Trojan Spirit. Co yeah, there we go. There we there go. Got those guys out of our head. Uh, listen, you know, you know, sometimes we make that joke, you know, when an early, early show in the season, we go, oh, we're in mid-season form. We're in spring form. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's OTA we, we form. Are, yeah, we're in OTA form right Whatever now. Form. This, is, this is voluntary workout form right now. <laughs> yeah. It's, uh, listen, not our A game, but, you know, we're, we're, we're just making it through like Tiger on our B game and still trying to still trying to get that green jacket. Uh, well, what, what are you looking forward to, to today, Sue? Oh, I want to see some tackling. I, I definitely, if we're if we're live and, and going to the ground today, I want to see some tackling. Obviously, we're not going to get to see too much because we don't have our full personnel on both sides of the ball playing today. But let's see the young guys make a name for themselves. I know my first me, I was hurt for my first spring game, so I couldn't even play in it. But as a young guy, this is like your first game technically. So go out and, and, and have fun and make a splash. Yeah, I bet they're jacked up. The young guys are probably jacked up and ready to go for this. Oh, absolutely. I'm so excited to watch those guys play. I was very nervous my first spring game, and I came a, a semester early. But the biggest thing about these spring games, too, is you can't overreact, right? There's really not a lot that you can take from this other than maybe who the rotations are going to be, where the coaches' minds are with the first and second unit. Still time to go. But also the other thing is focus on individual performance. What guys are stepping up? You want to hear consistency throughout the spring. Hey, this Jacoby Lane was making great 50-50 catches. Let's see some of that today. I don't get too worried if it's 60-0 to zero one way or the other or anything like that because we're never going to play each other in the season. You're never going to game plan against each other. But overall, for me, it's just more so what the rotation looks like and what individual players are standing out. Yeah, we, we've got the spring game scoring rules up uh, if you're watching on uh, the YouTube show. Uh, if you're listening on KABC, I'll tell you that uh, you know offense today will score in a very traditional sense. They'll score three points for a field goal, six points for a touchdown. The defense scores in, in, in different ways. If they get stops, if they get turnovers, if they get three and outs uh you know that's how the the defense racks up their points so sometimes you see this stuff and you you're not entirely sure how the how the points are calculated but it usually works out it usually ends up a a decently close game and it'll be interesting to see this offense go up against a Danton Lynn defense you know which which maybe they, they don't know quite as well yeah I mean well as far as the scoring goes I feel like we beat uh Cody's teams every year in the spring game and still somehow lost so I don't really know how the scoring no. is really gonna I need some receipts on that I don't know I don't know about all that I well, the I last two years, year, you threw at me a few times. I took it personal. I'm like, come on, bro. The last two years, I think I played like a total of ten plays and too. Three so. out of ten was at me. But yeah, they were. And in, it, the, and in the NFL, <laughs> I, I had a couple of those moments at Sua as well. But. I, I expect uh, Coach Lynn to be aggressive today, just to see what he has, just to see what guy put guys in space and see if they make tackles. I think he'll purposely drop back zone and let Zach get in space to see what his defenders do in triangle tackle situations. Because again, we didn't see a whole lot of group gang tackling last year. So uh, again. I'm a defensive guy, so tackling is what I want to see. The one thing, Cody, that uh, I think is always difficult when you look at quarterback competitions, whether it's a spring game or even in practice, quarterbacks are non-contact. Yeah. And so if one of my Ava's strengths over maybe Miller is that he's more mobile, you know, better in the run game, kind of hard to put that on showcase when when no one can touch you. Yeah, well, the only positive thing about that is, you know, when you go in these spring games, it's a touch rule, right? Uh, D-line, D -line, linebackers, they'll yell sack if they're anywhere within a 10-foot radius. 50 sacks oh, right. Yeah, and it's oh. a sack. But we have an offensive-minded head coach who's going to let some of that play through. So I think Maya will get to show some of those abilities, maybe scrambling a little bit here and there. Now he's not going to take off and run and lower his shoulder or try to hurdle somebody. But he will get an opportunity to maybe do some RPOs, pull it and run, and, and also get a chance to scramble in the pocket a little bit. But Miller can do that as well. So I think it's going to be an even yeah. playing field. But I'm more excited for spring ball because it's a glorified 7-on-7 seven seven for a quarterback. You're going to drop back, obviously make the right reads, and we get to see their arms on full display today. Yeah, it is often this time of year, Sean, where we walk out of here talking about a receiver or talking about somebody that had an interception yep. you know it is it's something around the football whereas the line of scrimmage maybe we'll learn more in Vegas against LSU yeah especially us getting to watch it is tough for us so uh it, it's usually a couple big plays I remember Drake Jackson's big interception yeah that, he, had a big yeah, he had a sick one yeah and uh in a, in a spring game there and it would be a big toss or a big run those those are the plays will stick out but my favorite plays were at the end of spring ball when I knew it was over and they had In-N-Out trucks and I would go to the In-N-Out truck and I, and I knew spring that's ball a, That's was, a true D-lineman right I, there. I knew spring ball was over and I said, hey, I'll see you guys uh, in, 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 in summer workouts. I'm there, done. there are food trucks here today, Sean. I don't know. I mean, we're, we're getting off at about 1 o'clock. You may want to head straight to Food Truck Alley we go. and see what's out there for you. I don't know if it's in now, but uh, I think there definitely are some food trucks 
out there for you. Sua, when 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 I keep hearing that uh, you know Danton Lynn runs a you know, Baltimore Ravens scheme, what wh- what does that mean to you? Uh, it means it's not a three four. It means it's not a four four. It means it's not a five two, and it's not a it's three two five. It's a multiple <laughs> defense, which means. You don't know what you're going to get. You yep. might see a Sam at the three technique, and then you might see him as a traditional stand-up with a two-point stance. You might see a safety back playing a quarter safety, then you might see him slide into a nickel, and the, and, and the nickel slides to a post safety, and the free safety slides. All types of things are happening, all to do what? Confuse the quarterback and confuse those guys upstairs. So I, I, I'm excited to see what type of mixes he throws uh, out here today. Obviously, it's going to be real vanilla, but we'll see. Yeah, we got to get in hushed tones here, guys. Now we're now we're talking over the national anthem a little bit, but we got the national anthem going on in the field. The USC Trojan marching band playing for the the fans here inside the Coliseum. All right, that timed out just fine. We're going to transition now out of the Trojan Tailgate Show into Trojans Live. If you're watching us on YouTube, change nothing. We're going to stay right here in the same YouTube screen and uh, same stream and uh, we'll stay right with us for the next hour on Trojans Live, listening to us as well. We're just going to take a quick break, and then we will be right back. Thanks to everyone involved with the Trojan Tailgate Show presented by Yeti. Trojans Live is next on the USC Trojans Media Network. <laughs> That's the final whistle on the tailgate. But before we take it to the spring game, we got to take care of some business real quick. Yeah, yeah, real quick. I've been going to the top. Moss will throw towards the end zone. The end zone. And then it is caught for a touchdown. Deuce Robinson. Touchdown, USC. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Trojan Tailgate Show is brought to you by Yeti. We make the gear that helps you stay out longer, travel farther, and live harder. And by Pachanga Resort Casino, proud partner of USC Athletics. Moss looking, throwing towards the end zone. It is caught for a touchdown. And it's Jacoby Lane for the second time. Second time. This special spring game edition of the Trojan Tailgate Show was also brought to you by Stone Brewing, proud partner of USC Athletics, and by Smart Stop Self Storage, the smarter way to store. Visit smartstop.com to reserve your space today. Coming up next, it's the moment you've all been waiting for. The countdown to the 2024 season begins with the USC Spring Game. Right here on your home for Trojans football, AM 790 KABC and the USC Trojan Media Network. The L.A. County Fair isn't just the country's largest county fair, which it is, or the best place to indulge in deep-fried, ooey-gooey goodness. Uh, Excuse me. It's also the home of the best live entertainment in SoCal. Don't believe us? Check out the Grandstand Concert Series featuring War. Friday, May 3rd. Your home for Trojans football. How do you do? And... Your home for fast-paced, fact-based talk. It is not a matter of opinion. It is a matter of fact. KABC, Los, Los Angeles, Angeles, Orange County, a cumulus me- media station. Listen up. Let's go, let's go. Welcome to Trojans Live, special spring game edition. Moss fakes the handoff. Big rush, steps up in the pocket, rolls right. It's a lob pass. It's high. Touchdown, USC. With full coverage of the USC Trojans 2024 spring game. Wide open. And got behind the defense and a perfectly thrown ball by a Miller Moss. Can you count one, two, three, four, five, six, six touchdown Ooh. passes for Miller Moss? Ah, 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 ah. This special spring game edition of Trojans Live is presented by Monster Energy. Unleash the beast now, live from the Los Angeles Memorial Coliseum. Here we go. Here are your hosts, Jordan Moore, Sean Cody, Sua Cravens, Cody Kessler, and Keely Orr. Hey. 
Hello and welcome to Trojans Live, presented by Monster Energy on AM 790 KBC and across the USC Trojans Media Network. You are listening to us live inside the Los Angeles Memorial Coliseum. We are behind, what do we call it, the West End Zone here inside the Coliseum, get, getting ready for the spring game presented by Postmates. I am Jordan Moore alongside Sean Cody. We've got uh, some extras for Trojans Live, Sean. Usually it's just me, you, Max. This might be my you know, debut. On a Monday night, very quiet, uh, you know, cerebral situation. We throw Sua into that mix. It's a chaos agent for sure, but we've got Sua Cravens. We've got Cody Kessler. Uh, we are expecting some special guests uh, throughout this show. I can see John Jackson already sitting off stage. JJ will join us. Uh, JJ recently uh, appointed to the uh, Southern California Broadcasters Hall of Fame in a really cool ceremony. So a great chance to talk to JJ, cry, USC legend. Uh, and then uh, we, we will, speaking of USC legends, we'll go from JJ to Juju at some point, I think. I think we're hoping to have uh, women's basketball up here on stage. Maybe Juju Watkins, Rhea Marshall from USC women's basketball. Uh, but we'll be cool to have them coming off their Elite Eight run. But uh, the spring game will be going on uh, behind us, guys. We'll, we'll be keeping an eye on that. We will uh, we'll get Keely Yor up here uh, with some updates uh, and, and what to expect with the spring game. Uh, but it uh, yeah, sh should be a fun afternoon here at, at the Coliseum. Yeah, always a great way to wrap up spring practices, doing it in the Coliseum here with the fans and getting everybody involved. We got all the lights on today. We got a little video time for Sewell with his sharp haircut. I mean, it's all it's all working out on a, on a nice Saturday in Southern California. This is how you want to wa wrap up spring, right? You're just it's a it's a developmental phase. You're not going to be playing anybody, but you want to end in something, a culmination of hey, we're trying to get somewhere, guys. This is just a starting point for this new team. I'm just happy to be here. Made a few calls. <laughs> got Cody removed off the stage. <laughs> Keely's here now. Yeah, so. I mean, Our, do we just get a bump? Keely, I want you to know you're wearing a cursed headset. Yes. You're, you're, Great. You're lucky if we can hear you. Love uh, it. Sua, Sua has been just torturing Cody this entire a a afternoon. As he should. Here. As he should. Yeah, 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 yeah. Of course. Okay. Of course. You're good. But we've uh, we've exchanged, I guess, for the time being, we've exchanged Victory Podcast hosts. We go from uh, Cody Kessler to uh, the real mind behind Victory Podcast, wow. Keely Yora. He's just Cody the face. Slander He's just, just the face. Nonstop. I love it. Keely, always our eyes on the field. Uh, what do you expect to see uh, this afternoon? You know what? I'm. I uh, we talked about this on Trojans Live ad nauseum. I want to see everything. Honestly, I want to see the new running backs room, quarterback battle. I want to see the defense. I want to see some of the guys that we've heard in the interviews kind of pop out. Marcellus Williams, Kamari Ramsey, uh, Easton in the linebacking room. I, I don't know if you've heard, but uh, head coach Lincoln Riley has been very uh, high on the line, inside linebacking room. They're, he is very high on that end and what he's been able to do in this 14 practices. So I'm very curious to see what they will look like. But I don't know if Cody's mentioned it already, but it's kind of hard to tell in this type of environment what the team actually looks like, especially a defense who's 14, 15 practices in compared to a Lincoln Riley yeah. offense that's two seasons in. So look that's at a the great point. Look at the individual performances, maybe not the defense as a whole. So You are the brains behind <laughs> Whatever well, Cody well, talks about. Sean, uh, Dan talked about this, too. They they really slowed install. Explain how they're installing this defense, too, because it's not even it's not, you know, not even close to the finished product. You have to learn they? to walk before you run, and that's his kind of approach. He wants to make sure these guys know every little detail of everything he installs. So if he installs one a certain package, they're going to break down every single detail before they try to install and move on to the next thing. So this is not a, a, just a spring ball install. It's This is going to be a continuous growth for this defense throughout even summer probably to fall because you there's a lot of intricacies in all these defenses and you got to get everyone's got to be on the same page we saw it last year you're not on the same page you get a lot of bust that's why Deanton Lins he's hitting these details he's not going to take he's not going to go 100 miles an hour he's going to make sure these guys are on the right page and if you watch UCLA last season they were so assignment sound and I had Lynn on the podcast and I was like what's the key to that and like you said Sean it's going very slow making sure everyone knows what they're doing and why they're doing it so it'll be in a half fake product today but that's the point <laughs> and, that, and that makes a lot of sense because I got to talk to uh, Taylor Mays uh, an hour ago and he was telling me about Kamari Ramsey and just how detail oriented he is and how he sees everything pre-snap and that just is a, a, a testament to Coach Lynn and how he coaches these guys and gets them prepared for the game you know it's football's not a hard game and, and it's not changing but 
if you got smart guys that are cerebral that can talk and communicate, you're already a, a step ahead before the, the balls even snap. So I'm excited to see what this defense look like. Road sure. game for the defense today, guys. <laughs> you take it as an affront that they're in the white jerseys, the offense in the, uh, offense in the Cardinals. And sometimes it goes because the first game of the season's on the road. It's a neutral site game, though, so I don't, I don't know what They're on color. the home bench, though. Home side. Oh, so they get the home red. bench, but road jerseys. Eh? So, okay. <laughs> okay. See what you did there. It's neutral. Yeah. Hey, what's uh, t- take us inside the locker room, guys. What, what's the relationship like between offense and defense? Is it is it competitive because you're going at each other so much in practice? Is it is it just fun and you, and you recognize that your teammates? Like, h- how can that be? I, I thought it was a little different in college and NFL, but I mean, in, in the college, everyone was kind of. A, you all buddies. Everyone's you're you're all in the same thing. Through. You're all in the same dorm. You're you're around each other. It's it, you, you know you're competing, but you're you're going to be in the locker. You're hanging with them all day. In the NFL, it's almost basically two teams. I always felt like it was really? just offense. I didn't know half my teammates <laughs> on, in the locker room. Is that a you issue? No. Or? <laughs> <laughs> no, it was like okay, he doesn't play spades with the DBs, and we don't eat together. So yeah. when am I going to talk to this guy? Okay, that's fair. Two you separate know? worlds in the NFL: <laughs> offense, defense. Totally legitimate question. Thank you. So, there was a moment last year where Sean realized that uh, he was a teammate of Marcus Freeman, the Notre Dame head coach, <laughs> and he had never no, I met nor heard of Marcus <laughs> Freeman before he had wow. taken over as Notre Dame head coach. So, it also you know, depends. Sometimes on. you're just too big time for other people. You know, the players come and go in the All league. All American status. When you're an established veteran on a team, it's hard to – all the faces, they go in and out. <laughs> All right, again, they put up the scoring rules. So the offense, uh, we mentioned the points. So defense, uh, they get three points for turnovers, three points for a fourth down stop, three points for a missed field goal, seven points for a defensive touchdown, seven points for a safety. Uh, so you get a defensive touchdown in a game like this, you go on big celebration or, or, or just handing the ball away. I feel no like, flag, no, no nothing. Yeah. I'm punting the I ball. I mean, they're going to the, throw the flag. I'll throw it. But you don't care. Yeah, I'm punting the ball into the stands. Like, <laughs> Come on now. That's the only time you're going to get to turn up and we don't have last names on our jersey so you're gonna have you're gonna have to see me trust me somehow. This, this thing <laughs> this thing is always getting up tight coach lincoln riley knows how to play these games he's gonna make sure this thing comes down to yep. the yes. last couple plays and then yeah. put he's got to manipulate in. first downs and yard markers he's gonna make sure this thing is tight at the end yeah we should mention jake jensen uh, he's the uh the, the third quarterback who I think we will see plenty of today. He had a nice moment in the Holiday Bowl. He's out there warming up with Miller Moss right now. So Miller in the seven. We know him. Mayava is in 14, and Jensen is in 17. But the game is about to kick behind this is, us. And this is what the Drake versus the rap game looks like. Just Zach versus 20 right yeah, here. Yeah, Zachariah Branch is about to uh, – uh, he's just going to catch this kick because there's nobody to block for him. So – Better he catches it than it comes into our set. It was uh, close enough there. But I think special teams is something that they've talked about, kickoffs, things like that, where a little bit more attention to detail and maybe they can get better in some of those areas. For sure. And I talked to Zachariah Branch earlier this week, and he said that he's actually on punt return for the first time in his career. So he said that's definitely something he's going to watch for. Uh, make sure that his speed makes a factor in that game. I actually well. like him better on punt return than kick return because on punt return you can stack guys a lot quicker and there's already blocks taking place. Kick return. One missed block, and it's over with. Uh, that yeah. wall is taken down. So I think uh, this might be the new Adori at punt return. Yeah, I'm going to stamp it now. So here's my question. With Adori, I felt like he almost – lost that sense of judgment of when to go versus when to not. I don't think he lost the sense of judgment. I think, I think his judgment was always care. go. <laughs> okay, but my point being, you know, when you're that good, do you yeah. lose that sense of maybe take what you can get versus? Nah, you just the, believe everything's okay. going to the house because that's the way it's been since you started playing football okay. is, my, is my theory on that. Hey, we got to take a quick break. we got a lot more Trojans Live to come. Keeley will be back. We've got guests to come. The spring game is underway live from the Coliseum on the USC Trojans Media Network. Blue, 42. Give me the energy to catch the ball, to blow by the defense, to crush whatever comes at me, to win the division, the conference, a ring. Monster Hydro helps Grunk perform at his best every day with the energy and electrolytes your body needs to win on or off the field. Monster Hydro, advanced hydration for everyday performance, hard charging hydration. It takes hard work to be the best in the game. Planning, commitment, resilience, sweat. That's why Old Dominion Freight Line, the number one national LTL carrier for quality, works hard to be the best in the game and is proud to support those striving to be the best in theirs. 
Old Dominion Freight Line. Official freight carrier of USC Athletics. Helping the world keep promises. Ralph's always gives you savings and rewards. Check, check, one, two, one, two. This should be Mike Five. Check, one, two, one, two. You enjoy over $500 in savings every week with digital coupons. Plus, you can earn fuel points to save up to $1 per gallon at the pump. And with a Boost membership, you'll save even more with double fuel points and free delivery. So you can always save big every day with our savings and rewards. Ralph's, fresh for everyone. Savings may vary by state. Restrictions apply. See site for details. Tommy Trojan is at the 10, the 5, touchdown, USC. Make big plays on the field and in life. With iTrust Capital, you can buy and sell crypto 24-7. This should be like a form of the Manning show, That's like how the Mannings do it. That's crypto with the tax advantages of an IRA. iTrust Capital is easy. We're looking at that. That's not on. Huh? That's not on. It's on, no, it's not on our show, no, because we don't have rights to it, the way the Mannings do. Are we on video right now? Yes. Okay. Yeah. We have to look forward. Yes. That's why we put that on there, so you could continue to see well. I can't see that. Yes, that's, a, that's an issue. I can't see the TV. It's like sitting courtside but watching it on your phone. That's a good point. How long till we come back, guys? Feels like a long break. Oh, he's a no-glove type of running back, is he? Like Travis Dye? Workhorse. Surprisingly, I think Kyron Hudson might be the breakout receiver. Some believe spring to be baseball season. It's always Trojan football season. Let's get you back to more Trojans Live Spring Game Edition with Jordan Moore, Sean Cody, Sua Cravens, Cody Kessler, and Keely Ewer. Back on Trojans Live, presented by iTrust Capital, the official crypto platform of the USC Trojans, and Monster Energy, the official energy drink of USC, Unleash the Beast. And hey, Trojan fans, did you know the Ralphs app? They give you easy access to weekly sales and personalized coupons. You can earn fuel points to check out the app today. Say while you cheer us on to another great season. Ralphs, proud partner of USC Athletics, Jordan Moore, Sean Cody, Sue Cravens, Cody Kessler back with us on Trojans Live. Cody, everything went uh, flawlessly when Keeley was over in, in that podium. Just no, no issues. Not, not a single technical problem. It's either Keeley me there. or Sue's pain when I'm up here. Just saying, user error. I we felt yeah. so much more calm and at peace and just like my chakras were all aligned when Keeley was here and now that yeah. you're here, just full of anxiety. Yeah, now you wonder why I won't give you a golf lesson because <laughs> you, keep, you keep dissing me on this show. No, He's so true to you're spiteful, bro. You haven't no, gone no, since bro, we played last year, bro. Nice PBU by Jacoby Covington. Jacoby Covington looked huge when I saw him walk off the field uh, no pre-game. He's very long for a cornerback. So Jacoby Covington, who's so, you know a guy who's shown some flashes over the last couple years here at USC. Those corner spots, I think, are wide open. We won't see John Humphrey today. Uh, he's dealing with an injury, uh, the UCLA transfer. But uh, I think pretty open at, at the cornerback spot. Uh, but but let's talk about the offense, guys. Guys, as, as we get into uh, this, uh, you know, the story, Cody, will be this this quarterback competition between Miller Moss and Jade Mayava. And it was pretty interesting. Lincoln Riley was candid about it. You know, they were looking at some surefire transfer quarterbacks. And Miller sort of played them out of that with the way he played in the Holiday Bowl. And then they changed their approach, and they wanted someone to compete with him, but somebody who was on the younger end who had some production behind him. So, you know, Mayavo, they, they sort of, you know, tr trying to find a, a little bit more of a diamond in the rough with him, and, and that's that's where we ended up here. Yeah, that was my favorite part of the bowl game, too. For Miller was you get these opportunities, right, whether it's high school, college, NFL, and football, you have to make the most of them. And there was so much talk about who was going to come in at quarterback. It felt like Miller was getting forgotten a little bit, you know, towards the end of the season and going into the bowl game, but he came out through for six touchdowns. Unbelievable job. Showed you really everything you wanted to see from a quarterback going forward, especially in his first start, right? That was his first meaningful game, but I love that we brought in Maeva. I think he's a great young developmental player. He's going to be Unbelievable! You watch his tape, the, the, the potential he has and the upside that he has is through the roof. Big, strong, talented arm, can make all the throws, can run around, use his feet to pick up first downs. But I just love the competition aspect of it. And I know Lincoln is very familiar with that. And I was a part of a quarterback competition that you don't want to let go too long, right? At some point, you've got to make that decision. I think competition brings the best out of people. Point? 
For me, I think it's fall camp, early fall camp, or even, you know, you, you want to keep it open through spring, right? And, and we're going to watch today. This is another step. You've got to have a starter. Your, before, yours a went, two yours before went too long. Mine went into two weeks of the season. And, yeah. and the problem with that, Jordan, is, is now that we're you know, on that topic, was you're not just trying to win a game. You're still trying to win a job while you're competing uh, in a game on Saturdays. And me and Max Wittick at the time were going back and forth. And it was tough because I was out there trying to beat – Hawaii or Washington State, but at the same time, I thought if I made a mistake, I may never play again. I might have to transfer and all that. So it's tough, and I know Lincoln Riley knows that. Obviously, he's yeah. one of the best quarterback coaches, head coaches in the entire country, but sooner rather than later, you have to make that decision so you can be the guy, so you can come in and run those meetings, run those player-ran practices, run the offense. You can step into that leadership role, and it's not back and forth. Yeah, anymore. you don't want an unsure team going into week one because I remember when we flew out yeah. to Hawaii because remember we flew out like three days early. I'm sitting on the beach with Marquise, and I'm like, so who's throwing you the ball? Yeah. I found out like, the day I before. The day before we got to Hawaii, I'll never forget. We got to the stadium, and then we pull up on the bus to do the walkthrough the day before. Helton and Kiffin call me over, says, "Hey, you're starting," and I'm like, "Let's go! I got the job! I got the job!" Until halftime. Yep. And I was yeah. like, "Oh, okay." And when so I, when it was short lived. When I think of honestly, lowest points in, in this building in in my time here, that Washington State game here that was pick six I threw. and you threw it, but then but then the half thing. So you know when you have a stale half like like that team did in that game, like you guys could have come back if you had just stayed in and just sort of ground out an ugly win over Washington State. But the fact that you were still doing that and still trying to figure out how to beat a team, it it was too far into it. We've seen Lincoln, you know. With the change in the season, going from from you know Spencer Rattler to Caleb Williams at Oklahoma, that's fine. That's yeah, fine. I'm to okay me, that's with that. When you need like you know, hey, we gotta we gotta get a spark. Get a spark right? exactly. You know, that's what what USC did with Sam Darnold, and they and they won a Rose Bowl that way. You know, that's different. But I but I do you can't play LSU and go, oh, you get a possession, you get a possession. Yep. That, that 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 makes you nervous. Yeah, and the team needs to know. The the guys need to know who they're following. That you start you segmenting the locker rooms. Guys start saying, well, I'm in this guy. I'm you know I'm 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 with my Ava. I'm with Miller. You know, you start doing that. That's a and you're flipping back and forth. I think Lincoln knows not, not to play that game. So I was with Cody all the way, baby. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> better be. We, like we live together. You better be. That would have been a tough you know, it, situation. It, it's, you say that, but it, but but the truth is, and that, that that is an interesting dynamic of this competition. Miller is just Trojan through and through. In this era where guys are, are here for minutes, I mean, you know, we, we had a player who came in this spring and is already gone, right? So yep. <sighs> we're, we're seeing that now. Miller is the complete opposite of that. Just born and raised to tr Trojan Sua, you know, we were talking before the show, oh, you know, about how USC didn't really have to recruit you because you were a Trojan. Miller was the same. Miller's the exact guy, same, yeah. And and he's waited, and that's gotta that's gotta probably mean something in terms of the relationships he has in that locker room. I, and it should because you know, I, the last thing you want to do is follow a guy you know is going to leave the moment things don't go right or the moment he doesn't get his way. That's not a leader. How do you trust a guy when times are hard when you're down? 10 points in the fourth, and you need a quarterback that's going to lead a game one and drive in a comeback. How can I trust a guy who shies away from any type of adversity? And Remember Miller, that happened at Utah a few years ago? They picked Charlie Brewer, I think was his name, over Cam Rising. And Cam Rising was a oh, captain. Yeah. They all wanted him. They yeah. picked Brewer. Brewer walks away like three weeks into the season. Rising goes on to be and, one of the best and quarterbacks he's a, in Utah. He's a Utah history. legend now. He's yeah. a Utah legend in year nine of college. But he's a, <laughs> he's a baller, though. But that's what yeah. – Miller's the same way. He's not a guy that you needed to recruit at USC because yeah. he loved USC the same way I love USC, the same way you do, Sean, and Coach. So, you know, it has to mean something. And I, that's why I say I think he has the, the lead right now. Sean, you're pointing at something. You're watching the game. You oh, tell I'm just us watching what's the happening. game. What's yeah, happening? Yeah, tell we us what's happening. Tell us what's happening. Tell us what's happening. Nice, nice throw over the middle there. I couldn't catch the number who got that. But uh, a nice play, a nice throw by uh, Jordan there. Jaden. Jaden. Yeah, Jaden. Well, How you. hard is no, it to live it. call a game, bro? But, I'm terrified. And, Jordan, to Sue's <laughs> point, <hurt>. though, <laughs> yeah. about that is it, it's – you have to produce, though, right? You have to have That's results, right? right? It, it's and it, and it goes back when I, my sophomore year, right? We we go ten win games. The very next thing in the spring, start comes in open competition, right? And I had to go win it again. You have to continue to put out results. All right. Speaking of results, a man who's had an incredible career, John Jackson. He's coming up next on Trojans Live. This is a Trojans Live presented by Monster Energy, the official energy drink of USC. Unleash the beast and want the inside scoop on this game and all things Trojans. Be sure to sign up for the three torches presented by Smart and Final. It's a free newsletter that'll hit your email inbox three times a week with game info, player insights, and more. Go to usctrojans.com slash three torches and sign up. JJ's next on Trojans Live.
here in good vibes. It's all Buena. Stone Buena Vesa Salt and Lime Lager is Baja inspired and imported from San Diego, located near you at findoutstonebrewing.com. And Trojans Live is sponsored by Pachanga Resort Casino, a proud partner of USC football. Jordan Moore, Sean Cody, Sue Cravens, Cody Kessler. And when Trojans Live all started, it was just me and this guy, the great John Jackson, now a broadcast Hall of Famer here in Southern California. <laughs> JJ, congratulations uh, on that recent honor. What did that mean to you to be honored uh, by your peers uh, at a luncheon not long ago? I thought they got the name wrong, Jordan. <laughs> I didn't think it was me. I thought it was for somebody else, but it actually was for me. It was. It's a great honor, man. I mean, whenever you get recognized by your peers that you know that you broadcast with. You know, Pete Arbogast got to introduce me. It was a big time, a big time for me. And of course, you were there, so in attendance. So that those things mean a lot to me. JJ, uh, you know what? This is just a, obviously spring ball, big day for you. But you get to come out here and celebrate as a Hall of Famer, man. How's it? How's it coming back into the Coliseum as a, a broadcasting Hall of Famer? Well, I'll tell you, Sean. The truth is, I came down the tunnel. And, and try to remember all the times I came down the tunnel, including when we played Oklahoma and this place was packed, where we need to get with this team right now. Yeah. JJ, I'm sure we'll have plenty of conversations back at the studio uh, at KABC about uh, this season coming up. But what are your expectations for this USC football team? Well, Sue, so, uh, first of all, the most important thing, Sean, you know this, the receivers have got to step up. Yep. This team is going to be as good as a receiver step up, Sean. Really? You're going to talk about receivers? That's <laughs> weird. Hey, That's so off brand. I think J.J. last year, most of the time, was talking defense. Uh, he, he kept was, saying he was, it was about was. defensive line, defensive line. Yeah. I agree I, I agree with you, J.J. I think for the first time in, in a long time in this program, we have a lot of talent at that spot, Not but polished. no one really proven you know, that they can be – we, we got a guy sitting over, a guy like yourself. We got a guy sitting over here, and Amon Ross St. Brown who's in the house. There's not that clear, like, hey, you know, I got this. I'm going to catch 80 balls this season, guy, right now. The last time, I mean, this is as wide of um, talent difference than when Mike Williams was here. When Mike Williams was like unbelievable, yeah, that's what they need. They need somebody. I mean, I don't know who it's going to be because there's no Mike Williams on this team, but somebody's going to have to step up and make some big plays because. You can't, especially in Lincoln's offense where it's, you're, it's relying on lots of passing, the receivers have to really s step up and get open for whatever quarterback wins this competition. By the way, they got to get this quarterback controversy rectified by September. You cannot go in yeah. to the fall with a oh, quarterback we controversy. We just discussed the same thing. Yeah, absolutely. JJ, I got to say, too, congratulations. And that was so funny when you said that, Jordan. I remember going, what, what was it called? The, the lab, I the think? The lab, yeah. We'd go out there and do those there. interviews, but now it's kind of full circle. So congratulations on the Hall of Fame. You know these older guys have been doing it for a while, but I want to ask you on the broadcaster side of things. Best advice for two young guys who are just kind of getting into it and, and want to make a name for themselves in broadcasting. What are some of the things that really helped you throughout your career? You know what, with you guys, um, the one thing I even envy you guys for is you guys have your own style. And I think that that's, you know, what was for me, I, I wasn't trying to be somebody else. Um, you know, I always, you know, acted like what would um, I want broadcasters to say about me. I mean, you got to be critical when yeah. you mess up. I dropped the first pass in Notre Dame when I set the record for most passes in a game. I dropped the first one. It was right in my hands. So you got you to gotta tell the truth when it's there. But you also got to be um, sensitive to, um, you know, these players. I mean, you know, they're, yeah. they're college students, right? Absolutely. But because they're college students, because they're getting NIL money, of course, the responsibility. Treat them like adults <laughs> a little bit more now, yeah. Well, yeah, absolutely. the responsibility is a lot more. Um, well, but JJ, I'll tell you, the, the other thing is Lincoln Riley is going to be really tested because he's going to have to recruit before the scrimmage. And after, yeah. because if he, if a lot of guys start, which these guys are leaving, it seems like every time I look on social media, somebody's leaving or somebody's saying they're going to leave or there's a rumor, and you can't have that with a team that's supposed to be hopefully in the college football playoffs next year. Yeah, I mean, I, I think it might just be the nature of, of where we're at, though. You know, I mean, yeah, there's so many bigger picture conversations to have uh, where we're at. I mean, you were talking about NAL, JJ, you've always been very um, – locked into the to the high school scene and, and the prep scene in in southern california and it's it's just such a different landscape now we almost just have to completely think about college football differently than than we ever did before jordan i have a son that's a sophomore in high school and has been offered nil money <laughs> trust me his dad is tempted to take it <laughs> but um <laughs> but yeah he has gone like and played like back east 
in tournaments, yeah. and he gets offered NIL money. It's, yeah. it's ridiculous. Yep. I mean, schools in Texas, they are very, very aggressive. Um, take, us, take us through your spring ball. What was your spring ball like back in the day? You remember your spring ball games? This is where you won and lost your job. All right. I mean, and it, no, it's, it's basically more of just a nice fan appreciation. It's not when you're doing it. It was <laughs> we're going to war. No one's really watching, right? <laughs> nobody, spring game. There's nobody at the spring game. There was a spring game. Yeah. But it was just the end find, of spring yeah. scrimmage. Yeah, it's a spring scrimmage. Yeah. And, you know, whoever, you know, after today, whoever plays well, you know, and if they're not starting, that's a guy you have to re-recruit yep, yep. because he will say, look how I played in the spin game, and now I'm not a starter, they'll be out of here. All right, thank you, JJ. Man, it's always great to see you. You'll be a part of our broadcast in the fall as always as well. We're going to take a break on Trojans Live. I think we have two uh, USC greats coming up. Uh, Frosty Rucker and Amon Ross St. Brown are next on Trojans Live. Make sure you ask. Best in the game here at USC. Been the best in the game at the NFL level. Sean Cody, I'm Jordan Moore. But we've got Frosty Rucker here, USC legend. And then, as I said, the best receiver in the NFL. I will take on all, all debaters in, in, in that conversation. Amon Ross St. Brown, great to have you, you guys both back. Um, spring game, we've, we've, what, what are you guys looking forward to today? What, what do you guys look at when you're watching oh, the no, spring game? First, I mean, sure, I haven't. You know, I came to a few games last year, but, uh, you know, Caleb's gone, so got a new quarterback. <laughs> yeah. Um, just got coming out here to see the guys, see them compete. Um, I heard, you know, I heard a, lot of, a lot about number eight, Jacoby Lane, so I got to see what he's doing out here. He's got that number. He better live up it. to it. There you go. Yeah, I heard that. So, for me, I want to see how the defense responds from last year. Got a few new coaches, a few new players. 
Um, I really want to see them gel. And from the looks of it, we've had a couple of interceptions, a couple uh, tackles for loss, so that's good for me. Amon Ra, tell me about your spring. I was going to ask Frosty about his spring game, but I know he didn't play in spring games <laughs> because he was a big dog, a Frosty <laughs> Rucker. I'm hurt. I got a hammy. Amon Ra, tell us about your spring game experiences. Were you out there balling? What are you trying to do? Or were you uh, with Frosty Rucker in the uh, get well tent? No, nah, no, nah, I was I was definitely playing. Um, you know, I don't think COVID year was a little different, so I technically only had like two spring, real springs here. Um, but I remember, you know, the spring game here that we had, I don't think we went live either when I was here, um, but, you know, definitely got like three or four series in. Um, but it was fun, time to compete. You know, people were watching. Um, it's the closest thing you get to game before you actually play. Yeah, me and Frosty were more happy that it was just ending, and we got to go eat in and out. Yeah. After <laughs> we had Ed Ordrone barking down our <laughs> yeah. neck the whole time, gearing us up for that game like it was a Super Bowl. You know, Frosty, yeah, I'm interested in your take on this. You know, we've talked so much about how this program needs to get bigger and better in the defensive line to, to compete in the Big Ten. I, I've got two guys up here who, who would have been just fine in that area. You know, you've done a lot in nutrition as you've grown in your career. You know, what, what, what do you think are the oh. keys? Oh, Deuce just oh, – oh. Oh, I almost, oh. almost just mossed like I said, defense, for a touchdown. That's what I want to see. I want to see that. <laughs> more of that. I, I, need more, no, I need less of that. <laughs> I need more Big Ten and less. all the stuff. No, no points. Frost, t- tell me about changing what, what it takes for a player to, to change their body, take care of their body. You had a long NFL career. You got bigger. You sort of changed positions. You know, how did you do it? I know you got really into the sort of science and nutrition of it all. Yeah, so I guess it's discipline. You know, you find your disciplines in different ways. And when you're playing to be a professional athlete or be at the top of the top, you have to trim the fat and so to say in different things in your lifestyle that could be booze that could be your sugar intake all sorts of things and you got to be your very best to compete on the Sundays and people don't understand you practice more than you play also so each and every day to be the very best you have to put the best stuff in. Sean easier to give up booze or sugar for you bud? Uh, I don't. Um, next question. Uh, <laughs> Big gluten-free guy. Huh? What, what, do you, what do you guys got going? Obviously, I'm gonna uh, uh, tremendous. Congratulations on a tremendous Appreciate season it. and, and uh, it's getting getting Detroit back on track, yeah. man. I was out there many years ago, and it was uh, not a great place to be. But you guys, you and uh, Coach Campbell, who's my old teammate, got this thing headed yeah. in the right direction. Uh, tell us what you're excited about for next year. Man, we can't wait. You know, last year was we got close. Obviously, we wanted to you know finish the game. You know, on the on the winning side, but if you, if you look at the season as a whole for us, I mean, it was a successful season. You know, when, when I first got there, we were three thirteen and one, only won three games, yeah. and everyone's like, "Damn, it's, you know, it's the same old lines again." And then the year after that, we finished like nine and eight, beat the Packers last game of the season, almost make the playoffs, don't make it, and then going into last year, we're like, you know, we want to make the playoffs. That's our goal: get to the playoffs. Once we get to the playoffs, then we can take care of the rest. And so we won the division. We did that. Um, you know, that, that means home field advantage for at least one game. Um, and, you know, we kept going, went to the NFC Championship, fell short. But we feel like as a team, man, we can be even better. We know next year is going to be a bigger target on our back just because of how many games we won and all this that we did. But we understand that. We understand, you know, there's going to be more pressure for us to win. But I think we're up for the challenge. Tell me, tell me about the city, though. I want to know about the city because I used to go around and pretend like I wasn't a Lions player when I walked around <laughs> town. How is it now to walk around being like, hey, I play for the Lions? It must be awesome because that place was ready to, to really have a good football team. Up there. Yeah, it's, it's definitely dope. Uh, you know, when I go out to eat or, you know, go to the grocery store or whatever, people will come up to me and be like, man, thank you so much for, you know, the season. But most importantly, what you're doing for the city. Um, the, the people, the fans of Detroit are just so excited, so happy to see us finally winning. Um, they have something to cheer for now, and I'm just glad to be a part of it because, you know, it's a little different out in L.A. There's so much to do. In Detroit, I mean, weather, you know, it's, it's a little different. So the fans, they love, they love their sports there, and I, mean, I think they're the best fans in the world. You're listening to Amon Ra St. Brown and, and Frosty Rucker on Trojans Live. You know, Frosty, USC makes a, or brings in an additional, I guess, defensive line coach, and they do it in Eric Henderson, a guy that has this tremendous NFL reputation. He was with the Rams. He was Aaron Donald's coach. What does that mean for you know, a young defensive lineman? Aaron Donald was, was at one of the recruiting days and the practices. You know, when, when all of a sudden you're getting coached by a guy you know can get you ready for the next level because you know, all three of you guys were guys that were here knowing that you had pro aspirations. Yeah, it's been great to see Eric uh, transition to be here. Like you said, bringing the resources like Aaron uh, around, that's just huge for the guys. It's a, it's a boost. It's a good for our fan base, too, to see the best of the best coming in the building, sharing their experiences with our guys. Not many people across the country, across the world, get a chance to have AD that uh, close and be able to talk to him, pick his brain. Were you guys teammates? Uh, me and Eric Henderson yeah, you, were. Yeah, you guys crossed Yeah, yeah, yeah. We came in Cincinnati at the same time. We were there for a good three years. So uh, I spent a lot of time with Coach Henderson, Coach Henny, as they call him. Yeah. I used to call him Icky or T-Pain. That used to be his name. I'm sure he wants all that information. <laughs> but it's out there because it's family. <laughs> it's out there for you, baby. Let everybody know who you are. 
Frosty, give us a little. Uh, what, what, what's the insight into a day in the life of Frosty Rucker? I know you got a lot of things cooking, buddy. What's uh, what's got, what's next? A lot of investing, but uh, besides that, uh, I've been working hand in hand with House of Victory. Yeah. So I do want to shout out to House of Victory and all the fans out there that contribute. The uh, supporters. Uh, we're building a, an awesome athletic department here, and I work hand in hand with the guys doing the fundraising. So uh, HouseOfVictory.com. I want to say that. Uh, it, no, we, we plug House of Victory every single time. It's become a huge part of, uh, of college athletics and college football. And if we're going to win here, uh, you know, it's, it's going to be a huge part of our success. And uh, I look at a guy like Amon Ron, think that uh, would have been a heck of an NIL evaluation. Hey, 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 oh, man. On you, Amon hey, Ron. Hey, he's you, getting you it on the back end. a pretty penny. Yeah, I mean, I don't know how much I would have made. I think for, like, the top guys make the most dollars in the NIL. But yeah. I definitely would have made something. I mean, I was oh, only getting, yeah. what, like 2000 a month for stipend. So. <laughs> That's pretty. I mean, I, I was making the most of it. That white T-shirt and uh, jewelry oh, man, looking crispy sweats. today, though. Yeah, well, he's not doing too bad anymore. Switch hat up. He's just switch a hat. It's a new fit. You know the deal. Well, uh, great to see you both. I love it when the guys come back. Uh, you know, means a ton to uh, means a ton to the players for sure. Means a ton to the fans though, because uh, you know everyone in here uh, watched you guys and and cheered for you and continues to do so. So, uh, Amon Rock, keep killing it on Appreciate Sundays. It. Uh, uh, Frosty, keep raising that money for us with House of Victory, and uh, we, we will see you guys soon. Fight on. Uh, more Trojans Live to come on the USC Trojans Media Network.
T. Ontario International Airport is a proud sponsor of our USC Trojans. Visit SoCalSoEasy.com to book your journey through ONT today. And don't wait until game time to plan for retirement. Open your free iTrust Capital account today and get your crypto IRA. iTrust Capital is the official cryptocurrency platform of the USC Trojans. Jordan Moore, Sean Cody, Stuart Cravens, and Cody Kessler back with us, guys. I guess the defense is fixed. They're up 33-7. to <laughs> Yeah, I'm not. I'm not too happy about all the interceptions right now. But <laughs> have there been more than the two? I saw one by Covington. Yeah, there's three. There's three, three interceptions. Three yeah. So the all first three one, quarterbacks have thrown one. Now. Oh wow. So yeah. Jacoby Covington got the first one. Marcellus Williams, who's the younger brother of Max Williams. I saw Max is here. Uh, there we go. But Marcellus uh, got one. Who got the third one? Do you know? Ooh. I didn't see it. It was on the far sideline on that side. I couldn't see it. Um, but nonetheless, we bounced back. Mayava came back and threw a, or Mayava came back and threw a great touchdown there to Makai Lemon in the corner yeah. of the end zone. So that's good to see. But other than that, not much. Hey, but even on that touchdown and the and the pass good break coverage. before the great coverage, coverage. Yeah, the no, DBs are not looking back cluelessly for the ball. They're just shooting the hands. Yeah. Now, again, the first time, first thing I've seen that's new. No, on I'll, this I'll defense. give credit where credit is due. The DBs look very good they right now good. in coverage, and they're and they're you know this really good wide receiver core we have. They're giving them some trouble today. Yeah, we uh, Makai Lemon is wearing number six now. He caught a touchdown pass. Deuce Robinson's wearing number two. Uh, we were talking on air while well, he almost uh, mossed a defender and, no, DJ. and reeled one in. So uh, they they got the younger guys out there now. This looks like a lot of freshmen, uh, you know, sort of third team out there right now. And uh, it's, it, officially, it's thirty-three to seven. The defense is winning. And, and listen, guys, the defense is the story of this season, right? I think that there is, as you go into year three of Lincoln Riley, there is true belief that he will score points. He has done it for his entire career. He has changed quarterbacks, proven he can do that. He's won you know, Heismans with three different quarterbacks. This guy knows what he's doing when it comes to scoring points. Now he's changed over the defensive staff, and ultimately it feels like that's where USC's fate lies. Well, yeah, and he's never really proven as a head coach that his defenses can't compete at that high level. I think he's always had that offense, even with the great teams with Oklahoma, just never been able to capitalize on defense. I, I think he's had a, a complete – he's trying to revamp this whole thing, and, and I, I, you know, I, I, rec I commend him for what he's done because, it, in, you know, in the middle of his career, he's got a lot of clout, Coach Lincoln Riley, and able to make that transition to something new and really buying in. And looks like he's not maybe as much. I think he went from – he's not the quarterback coach anymore, I believe. And he's, coach Heward, yeah. Yeah, he's, he's going kind of more of an overseeing route, so – I think he's pulling back a little bit, knows he's got to take management of the whole thing. It can't just be offense, offense, offense. Well, there's just so much to it now, right? I mean, the job of, of college football coach, head coach has never been bigger, and I think we just got a touchdown there from maybe Peterson, Marion Peterson. Yeah, offense just ran one in. Uh, I don't know if it was Peterson or Joyner, but, uh, you know, there's so much to it now. I mean, we just had Frosty Rucker on who was who was talking about, you know, House of Victory and, you know, all that that goes into it. So then the head coach is sort of the GM. He's got to be, you know, involved in, in recruiting players and, and all that goes into it nowadays. So, you know, but what stood out to me, Sua, is when he revamped, revamped this defensive staff, it was people – they were sort of outside his network. I'm sure he had relationships or at least people he could talk to about somebody else. But, you know, he didn't really know Matt Entz. But you see someone like Matt Entz and you're like, man, this guy's a big time national championship winning head coach at the FBS, FCS level. And he's coming here to be the linebackers coach. You know, Coach Henderson, we've talked a lot about, you know, Coach Belk. Like, these guys have real big-time resumes. Yeah, and I know for a fact Coach Lynn made some tough decisions because, you know, I, I got a few guys over there across town that were coaching there that were like, yeah, no, I'm not coming, even though I, I was in his system. And that it is what it is. He made a championship effort in making sure that he checked all boxes and he didn't settle for what was comfortable or what was familiar. He, he knows that the pressure is to win now. And to go into the Big Ten, we have to make a splash. And the defense is going to be what we see first. Is the defense a fish or something we can rely on and I think he really took that seriously so he went out and got Coach Belk. He got Coach Ince who has a championship pedigree over there at North Dakota State so it's just he made a lot of decisions that I don't think any of us would have guessed but they seemed like they were all the right choices. And I think Cody you know, the flip side of the Big Ten equation is you know there's a lot of sort of like ooh, how's USC going to do and sort of trepidation in the way they talk about it. The flip side is if you can get solid on defense some of these Big Ten teams struggle to score at which point they don't have Zachariah Branch. They don't have Deuce Robinson. They don't have the speed on the outside that we have access to at a program like this and the offense that Lincoln Riley has. You can go right by in Iowa. You can go right by in Nebraska if you can keep them from just grinding you and, and, and slowing the game down. And, and that's, for me, the biggest thing with us, with Washington, with Oregon, these different types of offenses. And, and 
The Big Ten, you see it a little bit. It's not as much air raid or spread that you see over here on the West Coast, but they do have some teams that will throw the football around. But you, like you said, games are won and lost in the trenches, and I still believe that. But if we can get the lead on teams, if we can have a defense that doesn't have to be dominant, I mean, I'll take a top 30, top 40 defense this year, which would be a huge turnaround. Would love to see that. But if we can have an offense that can put up a lot of points, and that's going to start with the quarterback, whoever that's going to be, and the, and the skill players around them. But it's going to be tough, like you said, for those Big Ten opponents who love to run the football, who love to go in between the hashes. Can they keep up? And like you said, Iowa struggled to put points up last year. Uh, Michigan wasn't up there putting 60 points a game. Now, they had a great run game, and, and they could do things here and there. Ohio State always has a good offense. But overall, our, I guess, ace in the deck right now is can you keep up with the Lincoln Riley type of offense no matter what our defense looks like this year? I, I think when, when you listen to these coaches talk, too, and I, I'm sure that Lincoln Riley's, you know, hit the heck out of it about development. And, it, and it's yeah. got to be about development this, in, in these guys. It's got to be the guys we have out here in this field, the guys who we picked in high school to come to our school. We have to develop these guys because I think we've gone out in the portal and tried to grasp a little bit. And, you try and, and, and you know, it sounds nice. We, we took this guy from somewhere. And those guys, you know, maybe haven't worked out the way you lost. Maybe you lost a lot of money doing that. Maybe I think the key thing now is uh, getting these guys here, developing them, and all these coaches. I think they have that pedigree of development, and I think that's a that's a big uh, a key of why those guys, why Lincoln Riley bought into this defensive coaching staff. He thinks these guys are developers of football players. And you mentioned Ohio State. I, I think they're more the model for USC than, than maybe Michigan. I, I'm, I'm yeah. not sure USC is ever going to be Michigan in, in the way that Harbaugh did it. But you know, Ohio State running guys like Marvin Harrison Jr. out there on the outside and having quarterbacks like C.J. Stroud, who's from. Southern California. California. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's not that's not far fetched, right? So, no, not at all. And Ohio State runs right by these teams because they're good enough at the line of scrimmage to to not get to, you know, not get beaten up by these teams. And then those teams are not nearly good enough to deal with what Ohio State's had at receiver, you know, the last three or four years. Well and, and you said it, they win the line of scrimmage and Ohio State, you know, they consistently have guys on the defensive line and they may not be yeah. you know top That's 10 picks Bosa brothers but these are guys well yeah well besides the <laughs> Bosa brothers but you know, the guys that they've had over the last three years alone is just they have consistent talent where they can run stop they might not be the best pass rushers Ohio State might not get the most pressure on the quarterback from the D line but they send pressures with their secondary and they play man on the outside with their corners so yeah, we, we, we compare pretty well to Ohio State. Well, if, if you want to see an example of that, go back to the national championship game, right? Washington was very similar to us on offense. That's how those teams win games. Though. That's how Michigan, and I still believe that. It hurts me as an offensive guy, but I, I firmly believe in defense wins championships, right? You have to have a championship caliber defense. It has changed a little bit in today's era of college football. It's nice to have those high-powered offenses, but overall, and I know Penix was off that game. That's not what we were used to seeing from him. He was missing easy throws, but Michigan got after him. They controlled the line of scrimmage. They didn't allow him to find a bunch of separation downfield to, to Odunze and Polk. He struggled throughout the night, and when their defense is tough, they can run the football over the field and keep you off the field. So I think that was a great copy of what to expect in the Big Ten. Hopefully we do a little bit better than Washington did in that national championship game, though. Look how Kansas City just won their Super Bowl. Yeah. That defense. I mean, as much as, as great as Mahomes Spagnol, is. I mean, you got to give him credit, yeah. As great as Mahomes is, that defense is, is the reason why they got that, that ring for him. So yeah, you're 100% right. All right, on field right now, USC women's basketball is being honored on the big board and uh, several players down on the field as well. They made their uh, historic run to the Elite Eight, uh, you know, best best team in, in 30 years at, at USC and such a bright future ahead with Lindsey Gottlieb as the head coach, Juju Watkins uh, as the star player and uh, many other great players on that team as well. So that's our Women's Spotlight brought to you by Sprouts Farmers Market open seven days a week. Visit your neighborhood Sprouts for good for you groceries and great prices on the freshest produce. More Trojans Live to come on the USC Trojans Media Network.
segment of Trojans Live on a Saturday afternoon in the Los Angeles Memorial Coliseum. We are live at the USC Football Spring Game, which is presented by Postmates. Jordan Moore, Sean Cody, Sua Cravens, Cody Kessler. It's been our pleasure to be with you. Trojans Live is sponsored by Pachanga Resort Casino, a proud partner of USC football. And guys, I want to talk a little big picture. Uh, you know, Sue is always good for uh, for a rant. I wanted to get everyone's take, though, on sort of the state of college football, college athletics. We were talking to, to Frosty Rucker. He mentioned, you know, the need for people to uh, to p pitch in, raise money, uh, be a part of House of Victory, or or anything in, in the NIL space for USC to compete. Uh, but, you know, we, we had a player here, uh, you know, Isaiah Reichs, who, who came in and is already gone. I liked Lincoln Riley's response to it, which is in general, which all these guys coming and going in the portal, which is we'll find 100 people that want to be here. If you don't want to be here, that's okay. Go somewhere else. I, I like that answer, but, but from the large perspective of college football, we're in a very strange place. Yeah, I think I think it's it's difficult. It's difficult. Uh, we talked about developing kids and kids going through hardship. It's just uh, the, there's no onus really on on the kids. Yeah, they're getting this money, and it just seems like they can uh, kind of at will move these things. I, we've talked about this a couple weeks in a row, Jordan. About uh, it needs to be some kind of they need to be locked in for these two year segments, or you need some kind of contract to say, hey, you're getting this. What do we get? And right now, it's just you're getting this. See, uh, whatever we whatever I want to do, I'm in and out of here. So there's got to be some kind of real in, uh, in effect of uh, what's going on and. and and it's, and it's happening everywhere. It's not just at USC. It's at every exactly. school. So that's it's that's the just, point. I feel like it's just here, but it's happening yeah. everywhere. So it's there needs to be some kind of, uh, like I said, some kind of contract that needs to be signing with these kids that need to lock them in. And they need to go through hard times and tough coaching. And, and those things need to happen to become the player you want to be. And this is not happening now with the ability to just to take off when you, when you don't get a, a starting spot or, or a role you want. I don't want to rant. But no, please do. It, yeah. I'm kind of I mean, soft. you have I mean, a, a few minutes. Yeah, I'm yeah, salty <laughs> about this whole situation because I'm glad these guys are getting paid. They yes. rightfully so. Every Agreed. athlete should be getting paid for whatever talent or ticket sales or whatever they provide for the university. You should be getting paid. But I, me and Cody come from the era where we had to grind our own peanuts for peanut butter at Galen. Like, I'm not making yeah, that up. Did. They we would. Did. That's a true story. That's a true story. They would cut the juice machines off at 8 before the football team got in there because it was a violation if we got a sip of some OJ. So, like, seeing guys who get money and still leave because, uh-huh, it's not what I want. Like, it makes me mad because <laughs> you know, it's like, dog, at the next level, do you think that a coach is going to look at you and be like, oh, man, we got to give him what he wants or he's not going to play for us? Like, this is you're in, it's a knock on your early career before you even get there. And when you get to that combine, they're going to ask you some very uncomfortable questions behind those closed doors. And I guarantee the decisions you make here are going to come up there, speaking from experience. So, no, I just yeah. don't like that. It's just a lack of passion and a lack of, you know, character to, 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 deal, with all, to with deal with all adversity, as you said. Yeah, I mean, two points to what they said real quick. One, I, I love the idea, too, and I've said this before on the podcast, of the contract thing that Sean just said, right? So lock them in maybe two years, and then they can renew it after two years, and then as a grad, maybe one more year. But the problem with that is there needs to be a void because if the coaches can leave whenever they want, if yep. you commit to a guy, it's tough to say, hey, sign this two-year contract, commit to me, I may leave before you even get here, or I may leave halfway yep. through, whether I get fired or whether I go somewhere else. So it's tough to have the kids commit and not use the portal to their advantage when coaches kind of do the same thing. And the other no thing, question. back to Sue's point, is, is – Yes, we had to do that, and I understand. I'm frustrated. And we Matt Liner, for them to run. I know. Yeah, Matt Liner was that, and, and I love seeing the kids get paid. And I wish we could have been a part of the NIL and all that. But it's also tough to, I, I guess, because it's an outside source in the House of Victory, it makes it easier. But you have to be able to be a, effective NIL to, com, to to compete in recruiting. If you don't do that, then you're going to lose these guys that maybe are in your own backyard that should be here at USC or might have been in the past. But if you can't compete with NIL, you have to adapt or else you're going to fall behind in not only recruiting but production on the field as well. Or put a clause in where you can leave whenever you want to, but you have to pay that money back. Oh, that's now, – now we're – Oh, all of a sudden, I don't want to leave as fast as I want well, to. Well, I will say this, point, too. Though. There were guys that I played with that, you know, produced so much – here. Morgan Breslin's the guy that always comes to mind, right? He was such a good player here. I think he was underrated. But then he had those injuries towards the end of his career, never made any money in the NFL, right? Man, There's Morgan guys that beast, produce dude. so much in college that don't pan out in the NFL. That's why I'm a fan of the NIL in that sense. But I'm with you. The the, the gray lines are very gray, and it's, and it's, it's to me – 
how can you pay this? What can you do that? I mean, it's a just deal it's is very, a deal, man. yeah, it's very tough to figure out the fine line of it. But I think it's going to continue to adapt over the years. You're seeing it. That's why I think you saw all those coaches that say maybe they're done with coaching. You, know, you see Saban take yeah. off. Yeah, and Belichick. They don't want to. They don't want to. See, I but mean, what's crazy about are coming from college that are entitled and they're just like maybe we don't want to play this game. But like what's that. crazy about Saban doing it is that man, Bama's been breaking players off for the last 15 years before oh, this was oh, even legal. Boy, so go. like it's just a bit hypocritical. Here we go. Yeah, Sue's going to have some Twitter beef after this episode. Bring it. I promise. I got receipts. Yeah, I, I, I do think, you know, a lot of the stuff that ties this all together is just, just there's a lack of leadership at the top of college football. There is no commissioner. There there are no rules for everybody. You, you're, you're, you're doing it conference by conference. It's different at school by school. It's kind of always been like that. So in that sense, the sports always had issues. Schedules are imbalanced. Conference moves are all over the place. You know, so it, it, it is very difficult. And, uh, you know, I, I, I think it's in, incredible for our fans you know we appreciate sort of the patience as we all kind of roll with this we're rolling into the big 10 i think we're really excited about it there's some awesome matchups coming up and we're excited to to bring it to you this fall uh, thank you to everyone that put us on air here today it was a, a fun two hours at the spring game uh, cody kessler sua cravens sean cody i'm jordan moore fight on everybody have fight a on. great spring summer we will see you back in the fall for kickoff